Let's think about how to solve problems that involve constant velocity. Now, remember that in this series of videos, we've been focusing on problems with constant acceleration. We've been focusing on problems with constant acceleration, and now we're going to deal with a special case, which is when the velocity is also constant. So again, all along, we've been talking about problems where the acceleration was constant, and now we're going to talk about problems where the velocity is also constant. Again, our topic right now is problems where not only the acceleration, but also the velocity are, are constant. We want to think about how to deal with those problems. Well, it turns out that those problems are kind of much simpler uh, than the other kinematics problems. It's very simple to deal with a problem that has constant velocity. Remember that for constant, uh, when we're dealing with general constant acceleration, when we're dealing with general constant acceleration, there's five different equations that we have to choose from. Generally speaking, up till now, with constant acceleration problems, we had to choose among five different equations. But when your velocity is also constant, there's only one simple equation that you need to use. There's one simple equation for constant velocity, which is that your displacement equals your velocity times your time. Your displacement equals your velocity times your time. This is a very simple equation. This is the equation that is more conventionally known as distance equals rate times time. Uh, you've probably heard that very simple and common equation, distance equals rate times time. Well, I hope you can see why this is really just giving us that same idea, distance equals rate times time. Uh, displacement is kind of like the distance. Uh, your velocity is your rate of motion, and here's the time. So when you're dealing with a problem that has constant velocity, you can just use the very simple and common sense equation, distance equals rate times time, or uh, in our terms, displacement equals um, velocity times time. I've written this down for the x component. Um, why don't you pause the video and try to write this down for the y component? Try to write down what this equation would look like for the y component. That should be a very simple exercise. y displacement equals y velocity times time. Again, that basically means distance equals rate times time. So when the problem deals with constant velocity, there's only one equation that we have to use, this very simple equation. And of course, if we know two of the numbers, we can find the third number. If we know two of the numbers, we can find uh, the third number. So when you're dealing with a constant velocity problem, all you have to do is get two of these three variables, and then you can plug into this equation and get the third variable. So one point I really want to stress here is that for a constant velocity problem, you don't use the whole um, systematic um, approach that we've been using on other problems. Right? You, you can use some parts, but not other parts. Um, for example, we're not, uh, we don't have five different kinematics variables. We don't have five different equations. In fact, if you try to think about this in terms of the five original kinematics equations, you can get messed up. Maybe I can just briefly show you here why when you're doing constant velocity, it actually can mess you up to try to use the five kinematics equations. So let's try to briefly explain why um, you wouldn't want to use the five kinematics equations for constant velocity. Okay, so let's write down uh, our variables. I'm going to erase the y component here. We've been mainly focusing on x components, so I'll erase this. Incidentally, um, I should mention uh, this is actually a quite important section of the videos for um, us to work through because um, there's one very important situation where you do have constant velocity, um, which is in two-dimensional projectile motion. In two-dimensional projectile motion, your horizontal velocity is constant. In two-dimensional projectile motion, your horizontal velocity is constant. We're not covering two-dimensional motion in this particular series of videos, but remember one of the main reasons that we're going through this material on one-dimensional motion is to prepare us for two-dimensional motion, and especially two-dimensional projectile motion. Um, so this uh, situation here with constant velocity is actually going to be quite important, so it's important that we uh, feel confident uh, about this because you're going to need to deal with a constant horizontal velocity anytime you're doing two-dimensional projectile motion. And again, when you're doing that, you would not want to use the original five kinematics equations. They turn out not to work so well in this situation. So let's see why that is. Now, what are our standard kinematics variables? Where well, our standard kinematics variables are displacement, initial velocity, final velocity, 
acceleration, and time. Here's the standard variables that we've been using up till now to solve kinematics problems. Now, what happens to these variables when you're dealing with constant velocity? What happens now that we're dealing with constant velocity? Uh, well, one thing should really jump out at you. What's the acceleration going to be? Remember, we're dealing with constant velocity, so what's the acceleration going to be? Well, just a little bit earlier in these videos, we were discussing that when your velocity is constant, what's your acceleration? Zero. I hope that nobody said that if the velocity is constant, that all we know is that the acceleration is constant. Uh, it's true that the acceleration is constant, but we know a lot more than that. When the velocity is constant, we know that the acceleration is zero. That's a very important relationship. If it wasn't obvious to you that constant velocity means zero acceleration, you should go back and redo the previous portion of the videos where we discussed that, because that's a crucial relationship in physics. The acceleration tells you how the velocity is changing. The acceleration tells you how the velocity is changing. I remember that if the acceleration is parallel to the velocity, we're speeding up. If the acceleration is anti-parallel to the velocity, we're slowing down. Um, and if the, accelerate, um, if the acceleration is zero, then we're neither speeding up nor slowing down. In one dimension, that means constant velocity. Okay, so um, constant velocity would tell us that this acceleration is going to be zero. So here's another question that should be very easy. Um, if we have constant velocity, what's the relationship between the initial velocity and the final velocity? That should be a very easy question. If our velocity is constant, what's the relationship between the initial velocity and the final velocity? Again, if the velocity is constant, what's the relationship between the initial velocity and the final velocity? Uh, if that's not obvious to you, you should pause the video for a second and think about it. Um, it really should be obvious. What's the relationship between these two variables? Uh, that's something that really should be obvious. Um, if the velocity is constant, um, then these two are equal. The relationship is that they're equal. The initial velocity is the same as the final velocity. That's what it means when we say the velocity is constant, right? If we say that the velocity is constant, we mean that the velocity is not changing. Well, if the velocity is not changing, the initial velocity has to be the same as the final velocity. So if we're actually thinking about what it means to have a constant velocity, um, it should really be obvious that these two variables are going to be equal to each other. Well, if the initial velocity is the same as the final velocity, then it's kind of pointless to actually have two different variables for those. Why, why, what's the point of having separate variables for the initial and final velocity if they're going to be the same as each other? So when you're dealing with constant velocity, we can eliminate those and just replace them with a symbol symbol uh, with a single symbol for velocity. When your velocity is constant, there's no point distinguishing between the initial velocity and the final velocity because they're the same. So we can just refer to the velocity since the velocity is not going to be changing anymore. That's the reason why in this formula over here, I didn't have to say if this was the initial or the final velocity because those are the same. So why, if there's no point always putting down an I or an F if the initial is the same as the final. Okay, um, so instead of the initial and final velocity, we'll just refer to the velocity when the velocity is constant. All right, and now again, what I want to point out is that um, trying to use um, a lot of the, uh, some of the standard kinematics equations proves not to be very useful at this point. Uh, let's see why that is. So here's one of the uh, standard kinematics equations. Um, try to pause the video and see why this equation is not very useful when we have constant velocity. Try to figure out why this will not be useful with constant velocity. Well, what can we plug in for the acceleration? We know the acceleration is zero, right? We know the acceleration is zero, so actually this term here is just going to drop out. Since the acceleration is zero, this term is just going to drop out. And all that we have left is that the final velocity equals the initial velocity. Well, that's not useful because we already knew that. Uh, of course, if we hadn't already figured that out, I guess that would be a little bit useful, but that should have been obvious to us already. Remember, it should be obvious that if your velocity is constant, the final velocity equals the initial velocity. So this equation turns out not to be very helpful because it just tells us what we already knew. One thing in particular 
Um, you might have thought that we could use this equation to find the time. You might think that this equation would be useful for finding the time, but now you can see that it doesn't work that way because the time term is going to drop out. So if you tried to use this equation to find the time, um, you would be disappointed. So this is what I meant when I said that a lot of the standard kinematics equations actually are not very useful um, when you're working with constant velocity. Instead, you should just use this equation over here and forget about the standard equations.